Hey, hey, Cody. Hey, Aaron, how are you? Good, and hey, everyone. This is uh, Mind, Money, and Muscle, a series of discussions about being mentally, financially, and physically resilient. And uh, my name is Aaron Philippi. I'm a good friend of uh, Cody Fowler, founder of Fowler Financial. And uh, um, Cody, you're, uh, you're looking good. You're looking fit. We're going to talk more about muscles and physical fitness today. You up for that? Absolutely. Sounds great. <laughs> All right. Um, so you said a lot um, that uh, Fowler Financial Discipline focused note buying practices, on, uh, focusing on uh, note buying practices are key to its success. But I, I, I'm especially curious about how your fitness practices over the years helped you become more disciplined and focused as a note buyer. So I wonder if we could set this up and start with um, tell us a little bit more about your history as a fit human being. <laughs> All right. Well, I know we've got a short period of time here, so um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you back to like my earliest days, but I'll be very brief and concise about it because um, for whatever reason, as, as a, a child, I had um, a very early inspiration about health and fitness and uh, I'm, I'm sure anybody listening or watching um, knows who Sylvester Stallone is and, and knows the Rocky series. Um, for whatever reason, I just really took a liking to that. And so as a child, my father actually created a, a barbell for me. So my earliest days of working out were probably at the age of five or six. And, and he took a just a piece of metal, a metal bar, and two planter pots, and he put uh, cement in each side. So he created, I don't know, 10 or 15 pounds, but that was the homemade uh, barbell. And so I would run around the house thinking I was uh, Rocky Balboa. And uh, so that was my training from an early age. And uh, somehow it's, it, it sort of stuck. And the dietary practices evolved as well, where uh, at Halloween, I you know wanted the box of raisins instead of the nerds, and uh, so I've I've always kind of and I've got to credit my mom as well because she was she was pretty forward thinking about sugar and um, just had a feeling that you know like we should eat if we had a you know peanut butter and um, honey sandwich instead of jelly or jam like that, that might be the way to go. And so I just, I think there were some good parental influences early on. And so for really, you know, my whole life, um, I've been uh, trying to um, stick to a, a, a pretty healthy lifestyle in terms of exercise and, and diet. And fortunately, um, that, that, that pattern has been also helpful in translated into certain disciplines in business. And, and, and the way I think about it is, it, it's just like if you're in the gym and you know it's, it's not always comfortable. And Joe Rogan, I just recently was listening to a, a podcast that, uh, that Joe Rogan did, and he was talking about how much of an aversion most people have to being uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. and, but that's really where the growth is. And, and, and so it's not comfortable necessarily, breaking down muscle, tearing muscle, and, and being in the gym and sweating and, and, and doing, you know, lots of reps and sets and, and whatnot. But, but that's really where the growth comes in. And, and so how I think that um, translates into how we do things in business is if you think about conversations and Tim Ferriss does a nice job. He's described uh, the kind of, the, and I'll, I'll probably chop up this quote a bit, but the general concept is that the quality of your life is sort of boils down to the number or the degree of uncomfortable conversations that you have. Mm. And boy, is that true, right? If everything you approached in your day was like, I got to stay in the comfort zone, um, you, you won't likely jump that to that next level continually. You might get lucky, but, but again, it's discipline, it's being uncom uncomfortable. And that's how I think there's a, a parallel um, in a big way, for me at least, in how, that, how we operate um, in business and we're disciplined and we get uncomfortable and, 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 and how I, that translates into the gym as well. Got it. Okay, well, that's, um, 
That's awesome. I wonder, <clears throat> so how often do you work out? I actually try to, um, to get some form of exercise every day. And, and, and there's a very rare occasion where that doesn't happen. And some people will say, like, you know, you should work out four to five days a week or something like that. Like, that's a healthy. But my personal philosophy on that, and I learned this from, from Jack Canfield um, in Success Principles, is, excuse my language, but he says, 100% um, is a breeze, 99% is a bitch. And, and, and the reason being is there's, there's no thinking involved about whether I'm going to work out that day it, other than when it's going to be right. It's not will I or won't I it's okay. There's this number of hours in, in the day for, for me that, that I'm not sleeping and at what point am I going to fit in some physical fitness. Mm. And to me, that's very, it, it makes it very simple. It really is. And it doesn't matter if I'm traveling. Uh, it could be in a hotel Right now, because of the pandemic, the gyms are not open, so I have to make do with with uh, body weight exercises. Or you know, if I'm out gardening and and right now I'm I'm watering the five gallon uh, bucket, I might just do some curls with it. It is amazing how create you know how you can be creative with things around you. That I mean, shoot, I had a I had a case of 24 bottles of water this morning. I started to lift it up, and I thought. But that is like a, that's like a lateral raise for a shoulder exercise. And, uh, you know, I had just done some inverted uh, push-ups uh, uh, with my feet on the bed. So it was like, it was like a, a military press. So it, the, you, can, you can Google and find body weight exercises or animal flow yoga. There's a million different ways for you to be um, staying active. And it only, here's the thing, Aaron, I'll, I'll tell you. I think a lot of people will, will um, find a reason to not work out. I mean, a million reasons, right? Don't have the time, don't have the, the equipment, whatever. Um, there's always time. There is certainly always time. I think that that is, I mean, uh, and I'm not trying to be on a pedestal here, but we've got two kids. We, we're running a business. We're building a house. If you really make it a priority and you feel like your identity is I'm a, I, I'm a fit person. This is what I do. And, and that's a whole different conversation about psychology, but you'll find a way. And I'm a very strong believer in you could stay fit working out 10, 15 minutes a day. Categorically, you could do that. Yeah. Wow. That's so I can't disagree. I mean, I, I think you and I've talked a lot about fitness in the past I, but you're one thing that you're I know you're really good at and certainly you're a lot better at me at is it is diet so I wonder before we close if you could just talk maybe just come up with one thing recently that you've incorporated into your diet that is just making a difference well I'll give I'll give you the thing that comes right off the top of my mind and not many people will 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 buy into this or do it but sardines the, 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 the amount of omega threes that you get. And, and, and it's, it's funny because I, I'm, you know, I'm in an office and, and other people are not going to smell sardines, but sardines are fantastically nutritious, an amazing amount of nutrient density, but that, that's not my tip here. Okay. That, that's just because I think it's a great source of protein and great omega threes, but, and just because you asked, but what, what I, what I would say is, if you, and we've had conversations about this, if you want to improve your health uh, by way of, of nutrition, I would just say, even if you're not going to get rid of the, the, the food, we'll call it, not, you know, like call good or bad food, but less nutritious food, then, you know, be okay having some less nutritious food, but introduce something that at least does have some great nutritional value in the day. And, 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 and that to me is a very sustainable way. It's, it, it's, it's just saying like, look, the body um, needs these nutrients and I have these cravings. And so it's not either or, it's kind of both and. And so, um, and, and of, it, as funny as it sounds, I think Arsenio Hall is sort of uh, quoted as having, you know, 
kind of come up with this concept of, of you know, rewarding yourself once you've had something. And it, it, for the parents out there, I actually think that this is fantastic leverage is, okay, you want to have some broccoli, you want them to have some Brussels sprouts, whatever. Okay, that, that uh, you know, dilly pop or whatever from Dairy Queen, you can have that if you finish this. And, and in my household, I have found that to be very helpful. And the kids buy into it, they'll eat it because I want them to get the nutrients. And, and you know, I don't, I don't wanna go um, long here, but what I think you get with, with um, this nutrition is not just better health, but you get more energy. You, you, sh you show up in your relationships and in business in a different way. And so to me, it's, it's, it goes back to sort of the Simon Sinek, um, you know, find your why. Like, why would you do this? For me, I think about all of the benefits for me in every area of life. So it's not that I love the taste of vegetables, but I love the feeling and the energy that I have. And I love the results that are created from having sustainable energy throughout the day. And, you know, I mean, it's like somebody asked me the other day, they said, if, you, if I drink that green drink that you have, it's a liter full of a green drink. And, I, and I've had this consistently for 150 plus days. And I'm, it, it's, it's, it's like, um, you know, Jerry Seinfeld with the whole, uh, you know, the X's, don't break the chain. So if you have this consistent pattern, you don't break the chain, you keep going with it. And that's momentum. And that is a huge part of exercise or nutrition is the end piece. So the, the, the takeaway there is get some momentum, figure out the why, understand that it's not just about health, it's about confidence, it's about energy, it's about showing up and longevity. Um, there, there's a lot to it. So well, that, that, that is awesome. And I, and I, that's great. That's great advice. I'm going to take away from that too. And I can tell that, that you're, you have a pretty healthy diet because I think you referred to uh, Dairy Queen's uh, dilly bar as a dilly hop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The dilly pop. I, I yeah, dilly pop. I've seen it in my refrigerator. I just haven't bought it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's right. The dilly well, bar. That's awesome. I appreciate that, Cody. And, I, and I, I thank you for your time. I mean, we're going to talk more, obviously, about a lot of this stuff that's health related, fitness related. So I appreciate your time and I appreciate everyone chiming in. Um, certainly, there are a lot more insights on fallerfinancial.com. And by all means, if you have a, a mortgage note that you're interested in selling, let uh, the Faller Financial team know at fallerfinancial.com slash contact. And uh, Cody, uh, again, I just really appreciate your time. Oh, that is awesome. Thanks for having me and, and uh, look forward to more. All right. And until the next time, everyone, be good to your mind, your money, and your muscles. <laughs>